could you tell us a bit about what it's like serving at the top of government? You were the longest serving health secretary. You held one of the great offices of state at the FCO, and was incredibly busy, busy now. Um, but what, what is it like as a minister maintaining that level of focus and engagement for such a sustained period? Well, it's a it's a privilege. Um, I mean, Madeleine Albright, who was Bill Clinton's Secretary of State, what Mike Pompeo does now, um, she said to me when I was Foreign Secretary, and just become Foreign Secretary, and I met her over a lunch, and she said to me, Jeremy, never forget what an honour it is to represent your country. Uh, she's absolutely right. But actually, it is an honour to sit around that cabinet table and take part in, in, in the big decisions of the day. And, um, you know, m- the biggest area which I focused on was raising standards in the NHS because I came to realise that in the NHS, as in all healthcare systems, we have a huge number of avoidable deaths and harm, about 150 avoidable deaths every week. And um, we we can sort out a lot of those tragedies if we get better at learning from mistakes that we have in our country, but actually, as I say, in every healthcare system, uh, when someone dies because of a mistake, it's incredibly hard to be open about it. The lawyers get involved. And so we need to change the culture in medicine to make that, that possible. So being involved in those uh, decisions is, is a massive privilege. Um, but it's also like being on a hamster wheel and you're going faster and faster and you don't actually necessarily always notice that you're going faster and faster. And you think you're, you're being a reasonably good dad and a reasonably good husband because you're blocking off time on Sundays or whatever for your family. But actually, you're quite preoccupied because you're thinking about the big appearances you've got in the week ahead. You're wondering, you know, what's going to be said on the Andrew Marr show or in the Sunday papers. So even in the times when you're at home, you're not, you're not present mentally, even if you're present physically. And um, in the Conservative Party leadership campaign, I, I remember that I... Um, we, had, we, we were flown around the country by helicopter uh, in order to go to all these hustings in, in different parts of the country. And on one of the journeys, Conservative Party headquarters said I could take my wife and my son, John, who was uh, eight years old at the time. And um, I looked at him sitting opposite me in the helicopter. It was a great thrill to have him with me. And I realised I'd been a cabinet minister for every minute that he'd been alive and indeed the same for his two younger sisters. And I would have loved to have stayed as Foreign Secretary, but I thought if I'm, I'm not going to be Foreign Secretary, actually, I, I want to have a bit more time for my family and a bit more time for my constituency as well. And the last year has been the most wonderful joy. So I have really far more. I thought I was going to be very depressed and feel out of sorts. I've actually really enjoyed myself. And uh, when Boris celebrates his... Um, his first year in office on Friday, I shall be taking my son to Paris for the weekend. It's the first time I've ever been on a trip with him, just the two of us. So it's a big family moment. And um, I am uh, really looking forward to it as we walk around the Louvre with our face masks on. I think it'll be a, it'll be a lovely time.